Uh, what up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Avengers. Finally, we get after San Diego Comic Con 2022, we get the announcement of two Avengers films, right? Avengers, uh, the Kang Dynasty, and Secret Wars. Correct? Yeah, he was. At, Kevin was asked about. Why no Avengers film in phase four? This is what touched off this discussion. And he answered it, I thought, fairly honestly, where he kind of said, look, back in phase one, two, and three, we had a lot fewer things to offer content. And so it made sense to have the Avengers kind of cap each stage of the journey leading up to Endgame. Mm -hmm. And he said, but now we have so many other projects and the Avengers are such a big deal. We only want to use them as a saga capper like a true end meaning that's why you don't phase four no avengers phase five no avengers phase six two avengers film so that was his answer as to why the timing but then he also kind of said and this goes back to our point about disney feeling a little bit of heat because of people's frustrations with doc strange and eternals and, and thor love and thunder he said we felt like people did need some kind of guide map for where this whole thing is gonna go and so that's why we we gave and that's something that we had discussed brian we we don't know we know the eventuality of secret war mm -hmm. but we just don't know that any of the movies released in phase four phase four like leads us any closer to that end or to that um i guess storyline being played out other than the multiverse, everybody knew, but we weren't sure because these movies felt so um, standalone-ish, right? It, th th there was not necessarily anything to me that felt connective tissue here. The post credit scenes were just cameos of, uh, it didn't mean anything. There's only two things so far that I would argue have pointed us in a direction. The obvious one is Jonathan Major's introduction in Loki, that series right now stands as i think the most information we've been given about where we're actually headed his monologues at the end of that show i would think will pay off in mm -hmm. these films mm -hmm. the only other thing i can point to and i don't have it i can't tell you where it's going but it felt true to the spirit of the mcu was the credit scene at the end of shang chi where he is indoctrinated into the Avengers and they make a reference to that signal in outer space that connects to the 10 rings. And you see Captain Marvel and you see Bruce Banner. That was a very old school Marvel cutscene, right? No fresh cameo, no throwaway lines, but something that was a teaser that you would think is going to be directly involved in a story that ties, I would think, not just to the Shang-Chi sequel, but to something involved with Secret Wars. That part, right, that, that end credit scene was dope. It was interesting. But all that we've gotten, there's no definitive answer as to what that is. No, it's gone nowhere yet. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I think a lot of these post credit have gone is nowhere. Or nothing that makes me be like, oh, snap, I can't wait. All I see is new characters. Are these the new Avengers? I'm not that excited about it just yet. If they are, and if they intend those characters to play a meaningful role in Kang Dynasty and or Secret Wars, I'm concerned because I think part of what made Avengers 1, even 2, but at least certainly leading up to Endgame so successful is you spent real time with RDJ, Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth. You got invested emotionally in the journey of those characters. And then the ones who were introduced along the way we're given enough room to breathe, be it Tom Holland, Anthony Mackie, Sebastian Stan, to where when you got to the end game final battle, it was cool, genuinely cool. And you were kind of like, I thought enthusiastic when each of them kind of got their shine in that battle. Mm -hmm. If you're tossing Clea and Hercules and Eros into this universe, I don't think there's, and you intend to get these movies out by 2025, which I don't think is going to happen, but like if that's the plan, I don't think there's enough time 
for you to build a connection between all of those characters plus all your existing characters and get us to care the same way when you get to those Avengers movies. There hasn't been any sequels. Pretty much, right? There hasn't been any, like, we only got Shang-Chi, that, that one outing, which I wasn't that impressed by because I was expecting to see more or something else totally, but they did what they did. What they did. Um, I think it looks better every, so far it's looking better with every movie that Marvel's put out <laughs> since though. I'm just saying, I liked it more than you, but yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, yeah. So Brian, you think we're gonna get um, delays on, on uh, I don't know if we're gonna get a delay on Kang Dynasty. I think we're pretty much gonna be something that we're gonna be looking forward to seeing because I would suspect that after Quantum Mania, we're gonna get a healthy dose of Kang in that movie. And then in every, I would assume that every subsequent movie leading up to Kang Dynasty and credit scene is him saying some crazy stuff to somebody. I don't know. And, Lo and Loki season two. I think exactly. that's gonna be okay. critical. Okay, yeah, that's gonna be, absolutely. So I can't wait for Loki season two to get more Jonathan Majors to see these other iterations of Kang, because that's what they keep talking about. You think my, you think I'm bad? <laughs> yeah. Wait till you see my variants. Well, it's clear that he's he's going to be the biggest source of momentum, right? It's like the, that's what I meant by like it is on his shoulders. We're, we're really excited. We think we can, he can do it, but like how they use him in these out like i'm this is why i think quantum mania is so key and why my expectations are sky high because i'm not expecting to see him before then when you look at the calendar yeah but i'm expecting him to come in hot in that movie where like yeah. you are scared of that guy yeah. leaving that film and you're like i can't wait to see what he's going to do next and then maybe you get loki and maybe you get one other film and then he comes back around and dominates in, in Kang Dynasty. Like that, you know, that he is the connective tissue that you're looking for. But you're right. Credit scenes, drop ins in other films, even for short bits, uh, kind of like almost like Thanos was sort of in the Guardians movie, but not. Remember, he kind of was on screen, right? He wasn't really in the stuff like that. <clears throat> I'm expecting quite a bit of that to, to really push us forward. But he can't do it alone. The cat, the the, the Avengers characters have to generate some momentum. And they're the ones who are kind of stalled right now. Doc Strange, kind of stalled right now. I would argue Thor. We, I don't know where we go from here after that movie. They um, wouldn't be surprised when they so see like Thor will be torn. Yeah, Sean Chi, I think there's some, I think there's some promise. There's at least a, an idea of like that he's joining the Avengers and becoming part of the team. And there's, what, can, what role can he play on the team? Um, so there's some stuff there. But other than that, like, they they need to they need to get some of these guys out of the out of the starting box. Similar to what they did with um if if you are into comics and I've read comics before, Infinity Garden was one of the most celebrated um comic books storylines in, in Marvel. I read it from time to time. I, I, you know, just just to watch it, to, to just to see it. And they took, they went a different route in the movies. With Secret Wars, I would expect they're going to be doing something similar and tying Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars together and not going to, um, not going the route of the Beyonder and putting all, because I, honestly, Brian, I don't want to see, despite how, how, how interesting it may be and how they would do it to make it dope, but I'm not really interested in seeing, um, you know, some of the same elements of Civil War where you got heroes and whatever fighting against each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Secret Wars and 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 a connection to Kang, I would suspect, is these wars happening on different multiverse wars against different Kangs. I don't know what it. It that's what it could be. Yeah, what you're referring to as Secret Wars is not just one iteration in the comics. There's a, there, I'm not as well versed on this one, but there is a Beyonder version. Okay. And then I think Jonathan Hickman has written a version of Secret Wars, which is more, 
at least so far, is more like incursion based, and the Beyonder is not part of that version. Okay. Of the story. So they, okay. they've done this story a couple of different ways, and it's okay. TBD exactly what they're pulling for the movie version of it. So. Okay. Um, with regards to possible directors for Secret Wars, Brian, Russo's have uh, said that they would like to direct the Secret Wars. I don't see why Marvel wouldn't give him that that project, being that they were so, so successful when Infinity War Endgame. Come on, are you kidding me? Right? But the Russos have also said that they wanted to deal with the X-Men. I would, I would assume that would be a lot for them to take on. I think with the X-Men, I think they could be offered a bigger role in the universe of the X-Men. That would make sense to me. Um, but if they don't go with, let's say they don't go with the Russos, Brian, who, because that Destin Cretton has been given um, the Kang Dynasty. Yeah, let's not let's not let's not obscure that for a second. I know because mm -hmm. we just had a little Shang Chi discussion. Mm -hmm. So, what I would argue was the most Marvel of the Phase Four movies was Shang Chi. It was the most it, to me. It resembled tonally and structurally the origin films of Phase, you know, Phase One and Two in particular. I thought the film was quite good. I know it wasn't exactly what you wanted in terms of its content, but I have found myself, I go back and rewatch mm -hmm. the bus scene. I even go back and rewatch the crazy end scene, which, you know, it's, you know, I've realized it's mystical. There's dragons and mm -hmm. kaijus and all this stuff. I get it, but like, to me, it's an easy rewatch. Uh, I watched mm -hmm. the skyscraper scene, my favorite scene in the movie. Um, so I actually quite like the movie. I think it's interesting, maybe not a coincidence, that the most Marvel feeling movie we've had in a while, that director gets the call up to do an Avengers film. Um, so it kind of indicates to me that he was easy to work with and they felt confident in his ability to kind of handle yeah. a bigger budget and an ensemble cast. So mm -hmm. also probably tells you that, you know, Simu Lu had a tweet out kind of like when he was looking at, he kind of tweeted out the phase five, phase six, and he's like, Seems like there's a lot of slots for me to have a role here. So it might give you a clue that, you know, there's been a lot of rumors that maybe Shang-Chi is getting the kind of Steve Rogers-esque role in the new Avengers team. Maybe this mm -hmm. is a, a view of that. But also curious that unlike with Infinity War and Endgame, not using the same director for these two movies, even though six months apart, they would have to be shot back to back. So Kind of weird, we get an announcement on one, we don't get an announcement on the other. And nobody's got sort of like a scoop that someone's been signed to do Secret Wars yet. Other than, to your point about the Russos, Kevin Feige specifically said they are not directing Secret Wars. They are going to work with them on something else, but he said it will not be this. Okay. What do you think is going on with that? I have a theory, but what do you think is going on with that? I mean, the only theory that I'm, that makes sense, Brian, because if it wasn't the Russos, I had no idea. I had no had no idea who would they choose. But based on the conversations that we've had, and Wakanda Forever being something huge, you said it makes sense for them to give. Ryan Coogler, the opportunity of doing Secret Wars. He should be the first guy. That's your theory. And, and that's the only thing that makes sense to me if it wasn't going to be the Russo's. Other than that, I was out. Yeah. I, to me, it's... He at least deserves the right to say no. I mean, if he... I'm just saying, let's look at the... Let's, let's go by the facts, right? He delivers the biggest debut of a, of a superhero ever. $1.3 yes. billion dollars only movie that Marvel's had nominated for Best Picture. Okay, so he's got that in the pocket. His star passes away tragically. Delivers the best trailer I think we've ever seen from Marvel. People are hyped to see this yes. movie now. Mm -hmm. If this movie is just as good, if not better, but different in its scale and scope, and we get a cool Namor, and we get an awesome way to honor Chadwick, but move on from that, and this movie does another billion three, or a billion five, or some enormous number, 
how is he not getting the call at least to be like, listen, what's it going to take? Now, if he doesn't want to do it, that's his, his prerogative. Yeah. But he should have the right to say no before they go to anyone else in the stable. Because Kevin Feige did say he does not want to have someone they haven't worked with before. So it kind of limits the field. You immediately yeah. know like who's sort of on the table. And I'm like, what are we doing here? If this guy's giving you nearly $3 billion a box in two movies, if we say, and let's say both are nominated for Academy Awards and he's nominated for Academy Awards, what are we doing? Like, like I'd be kind of suspicious if he's not honest and offered a ton of money. So, so do you think we get an announcement of director for Secret Wars after? Because if it's James Gunn, I'm out. I don't think it will be. Okay, okay. I'm just I'd be stunned, but I wouldn't say stunned, but I'd be disappointed. I, I don't think it would I, be. I, I'd be disappointed too because apparently he still converses with Kevin Feige via text. I'm sure he does. P pitching him about stuff. All right. Um before we wrap this up, well, hang on, can I throw my other theory in here? Oh, okay. What's the other theory? I thought my it was other one is my other one is the John Watts theory. I, okay. I think there's at least a possibility that John Watts was the one they wanted to do this movie, and then give it because of no way because No Way Home was such a success and it was such a large scale project, and he pulled it off to unilateral acclaim. I think there was at least some movement afoot. They wanted him to do Fantastic Four. He was he agreed to do it. That was the original plan. And then I think they wanted him to do Secret Wars potentially on top of that. Uh, and I wonder if that was like too much. And he kind of was like, I can't, I can't do all of this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he was like, I want to do small scale. And he walked away. And the only reason I bring it up is because it's very odd to me that you would get a confirmation of Destin Cretton for the one movie and then have nothing on the other. Yeah, yeah, that's what's weird to me. It feels very unmarvel to not have it tied up where you've got both people ready to go if you're going to use two different people. And so that's my only like was was it a little bit of an eleventh hour like he kind of surprised them with his withdrawal and now they're trying to figure out where to where to go from here. But that's why I say to me like Kugler's the no brainer like who you should be asking. Do you do you think we get an announcement at D twenty three? No, too early. Okay. What I could see, is <laughs> I mean, that Dustin. Kind of that... <laughs> okay, if okay, if okay, not, okay. Kind of forever, drops a large number. You might see a leak coming at like Christmas that he's he's doing. That is a huge undertaking, and that is just a moment where you have to just stand up and bow to Ryan Coogler and give him. A, 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 you got to salute the guy to getting where he is at right now. You know, he's very soft spoken dude, very looks like he's very personable. Um you'd like to see people like that succeed. And 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 I and I hope he gets that opportunity at least to say no. And I don't like I said, I I would be surprised if if he couldn't be talked into it. Now he typically it's interesting because up until now he hadn't really shown he wanted to do sequels, you know, Creed one big hit. He stepped back from directing Creed 2. Uh, but he obviously, I think with with the Black Panther, he was gonna come back anyway. But I certainly feel like with Chadwick's passing, he feels a sense of obligation, certainly, to do this movie. I am curious to see like, does he how many how many more of these does he want to direct himself? But I don't think it's lost on him. Look, I mean, the the significant, you know, he potentially, if he were to take Secret Wars and deliver, you know, the two plus billion a box that you would expect from that, I don't think it's lost on him that you could have, you know, African American filmmaker who's not even forty years old, who's gen who's who's been at the controls of three of the ten biggest movies of all time. I mean, that means something. Like, I think it means it would mean something to anybody. So I, I think. I have a tough time seeing like Kevin Feige losing that negotiation if that's the route. I just don't understand why it wouldn't be the first choice. If, yeah. if assuming what kind of forever is as good as we hope to think it can be. Yeah. If it's tight, uh, I'm out. That tight, you, you say James Gunn, I say Tiger. I don't want to see either of those guys near Avengers. No, no, no. If he, if he, if it's Tiger, I'm out too. 
I'm there with you. And oh man, we're gonna be the the villains <laughs> when we tear down these movies. Um, because uh, you know the dark dark horse dark horse would probably be Peyton Reed. Like if Ant Man three blows up and it's awesome, you know he will have done all three Ant Man movies and they've gotten bigger and better. Like bigger, he's yeah. probably your dark horse candidate. I agree. I agree because we've always said that Quantum Mania is a huge film and is every, it's underrated. It's underrated in terms of hype. I think. Um, I think the closer and closer and the first trend I think will be crucial uh, to getting that hype mobile going. You know. Um, but yeah, that's our show on the fant- uh, it's not Fantastic Four, the Avengers um, series uh, that Kevin announced um, at San Diego Comic Con. A um, lot to unpack there. Um, looking forward to seeing what announcements come are going to be coming up at D23 for um, Secret Wars. If they if they have any more announcements to 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 make for that, they've already made the announcement for Kang Dynasty. Why not Secret Wars? Maybe that's something that they they who knows. Um, but yeah, finally we're getting some Avengers films. Uh, let us know in the comments section below what you guys think of uh, the the titles and where it's going um, and how different Secret Wars will be from the comics. Uh, let us know in the comments section below. We'll see you next time on the Ninja Report. 